Okay, so now you're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and this is another Death Note related video for the live action 2015 series. Finally, I'm going to talk about episodes 6 and 7. Now, uh, the difference between this and my usual uh, episode things is uh, I actually waited a few days before actually recording this, but whatever. Fuck it, I wrote down all the major differences to mention, because if, if you've noticed with uh, these Death Note things, I've been mentioning. Uh, the uh, differences primarily, uh, rather than giving an actual review, because there's not really a lot to say about it. I mean, I, I, I put my thoughts in here and there, but <clears throat> regardless, uh, one thing I did want to mention is uh, Light's dad was removed from the ta task force rather than being put in cell uh, when they detained Light and Misa, um, and they had him take a polygraph test before they did the whole test with the gun to prove that he wasn't Kira. Not to mention, when they did do that test, Misa wasn't with them. Instead, they just told her about it, and she was in her cell still. Uh, Nier is, uh, is out of this facility now, uh, and uh, he um, is walking around doing stuff and helping out with things. Uh, Mikami has been shown quite a bit, and he's actually approached Light and Misa at, at this point in the series. Um, let's see here... What does this mean? I'm sorry, I'm reading through what I have here. Statuia... <laughs> they have leads on Yotsuba, on the Yotsuba group, uh, now, and so, already, kinda quick. Um... Oh, right, station, so I forgot to mention that they didn't show the, uh, station uh, in the earlier episodes, when Misa was first introduced, they didn't show the radio, st the TV station where all the cops got killed and what have you, so... This is, that wouldn't have been in this episode, that would have been much earlier, but uh, I forgot to mention that, so... Thought I would. Um... Looks like, uh... Oh, they, uh, L removed his handcuffs almost immediately after putting them on light in this version. And, uh... Nier is now, uh, Babel. Instead of, uh, there's... Iber and Weddy are completely absent from, uh... From this anime, from this live-action series. So instead they have Babel, which is Nier, and, uh... It's gonna have a lot of game audio in, I bet, because I left the game. I didn't mute the TV, but whatever, fuck it. But um, Nier is now Babel, which is uh, a detective. To uh, he he's the one helping Yotsuba, but actually working for L instead of Iber. And uh, Light uh, gets a disguise and hides a camera in the Yotsuba group instead of uh, Machida going in. Um, that being said, uh, Rem is almost completely absent from these episodes, uh, and Rem doesn't, uh, contact Misa when she goes into Yotsuba, instead, uh, Higuchi just calls her and what have you, and they, she doesn't actually meet face to face with Higuchi for their date. And, uh, I wrote, s oh yeah, Aizawa never got removed from the Kira Task Force, and the police never resigned either, so, um, that whole plot element of Aizawa coming back to help stop Higuchi isn't a thing in this version. <coughs> that being said, this series has been pretty interesting so far. I've really liked the direction it's been taking, and in later in this video, I'll be talking, obviously, about more episodes, but, uh, at this point, that's really all I can think to say about episodes 6 and 7, um, other than... The pacing, again, is pretty good, so far, and, uh... Nier is obviously, is still a male character. They call him he, even though he's played by a female in this for some reason. Um, interesting side note, uh, apparently, when, uh, they were originally writing the manga, El was gonna be Nier and Mello's father, but, uh, they decided not to do that. So, that's why they're just his successors. But that's why Nier and Mello, or especially Nier, looks a lot like El, and acts a lot like him. Because originally it was going to be his son, which I would have been okay with, honestly. But, you know, whatever. That being said, uh, just keep watching this video and I will continue talking about Death Note related stuff for this new tw <coughs> 2015 series. Uh, obviously it's not new, it's from last year, but regardless, um, until then, uh, that's all I have to say about episode 6 or 7. So, in just a moment I'll be talking about episodes 8 and 9. All the way to 11. Turn it up to 11! But yeah, that's it. Go on now. Come on.
Come on! Yay! Alright, so now it's time to talk about episode 8. Now, episode 8 was a really good episode. I really liked a lot of the twists they had, and I didn't see a lot of them coming. Uh, first and foremost, they kind of kept Rem a secret from everyone uh, with the Kira Task Force. Just Ellen Light knew about her, and then Rem just left, rather than telling them anything about the rules of the Death Note. That being said, also, Light's really started to develop into the character that we all remember from the original series, and because uh, he started to stop caring about Misa, really, to a point, I think. Because uh, <clears throat> in uh, the um, episode, in episode 8, uh, Light still wanted Ryuk to get Misa, uh, the notebook, because, uh, that way she would, uh, still give, be able to give up half her life, because obviously Rem wouldn't do it because Rem cares about Misa. Slayer. That being said, uh, another major difference is that Nisa didn't actually get to the Death Note in time. Instead, uh, Mikami paid this guy to beat her up and take it. So that happened. So now Mikami has the Death Note, and he acquired it in a much different way than he did in the series. Uh, in the original series, that is. Now he does have the, uh, Death Note, and Light has met up with him, and since, uh, given him his orders and what have you, like in the original series, just in a much different way. Uh, Nier has been helping out a lot with the investigation, and is tracking down the guy who hit Misa to find out more about it. Also, I'd like to mention, I forgot, uh, I, I referred to Whammy's house as the facility in the last segment I just recorded for this particular video. I don't know why I did, I apologize, I meant to say Whammy's house. Uh, but anyway, um, another thing I noticed is there's no time gap. Um, because, uh, I mean, granted, L still hasn't died yet, but there's no time gap, uh, for, you know, Light and Nier and Mikami and stuff, because L hasn't died yet and Light hasn't been in charge of the task force for the last few years. <laughs> Mikami, uh, raided the Kira Task Force in order to try and get the Death Note for Light from, uh, from, uh, L. But, uh, L decided no and did this little test on him that, uh, they went out and, uh, L challenged Light to come out and they were recording it, but then they stopped recording and Mikami got L's face from the recording and sent a text to Light with L's real name, L La Light. Which I thought was interesting because, uh, you know, obviously Light didn't ever know L's, L's real name in the original version. Uh, but that being said, I take it Rem's not gonna kill L at this point then? Uh, Light did write down L's name, but he didn't die. So I can see them going either one of two ways with this. I haven't seen episode 9 yet at the time I'm recording this particular bit, so... This is speculation, and this is what I'm assuming. This is sort of a prediction to add on to it, but, uh... I think they're gonna go one of two ways. Either L's gonna try and use the notebook as evidence to prove that, uh... Or, well, actually, well, obviously that's what he plans to do, is to prove that L wrote... he wrote down L's name. But, uh, L's gonna, uh, fucking... he's either made a fake notebook, like they did to trick Mikami in the series, or, yeah, Mikami, or they're gonna go the route of the movies, and L would have had written his own name in it with the 23-day thing. I'm not sure which they're gonna do yet, but we'll find out in episode 9. Uh, Light cares about L when he does write his name. That's another big difference, is he seemed really sad to write his name down, and he said, you know, I wish I could show you the world that Kira could create, and... It was very interesting, because now L definitely knows Light's Kira, and he's not dead. That being said, I don't know what they're gonna do from this. I don't know if L's gonna die or what. I'm really genuinely wondering what's gonna happen next, which is, I think, something that a new adaptation should try to achieve. Otherwise, you'd just be getting the same story again. And while I much prefer the original story, I feel that I'd have no reason to watch this if it was exactly the same, so... Having all these changes to try and figure out what's going on with it makes it very interesting. And, uh, that being said, I've really enjoyed this series so far. Episode 8, I probably think, is the best episode so far, just because it was the most intense and the most unpredictable. Had the most differences, I would probably say, at least, uh, from what I saw. I mean, all these episodes have had quite a few differences, obviously. Um, but that being said, I'll be watching episode 9 probably later tonight at the time recording this. Not that the day ma matters to you watching this, because I'm putting all of this in one video. But at the same time, as soon as I watch episode 9, I'll record the audio for that, and then put that on here, so stay tuned for the rest of this video. I'll obviously be talking about the differences in episode 9, and maybe some more speculations, possibly some more, uh, review bits, because I did kind of give my, uh, overall, uh, 
reception of this episode, which I think is an essential part of doing a review. So, that being said, just stay tuned and we'll talk about episode 9. Okay, so I just barely finished episode 9. I've gone back to uh, doing this uh, review right after the episode, just like I had done for the uh, first video, just because uh, I thought it'd be uh, a little bit more convenient and be fresh in my mind. Slayer. So the first thing I want to point out is uh, it was indeed a fake notebook that L had created, and he'd given Light's dad the real notebook and hidden it. And uh, Light wrote L's name in it, and it was all to incriminate him and stuff. Light came up with this whole story about it being self-defense and whatnot. Then uh, Light's dad re revealed that he had the notebook. Turned out Mikami had killed L. Um, because Mikami did actually end up killing L. And uh, Light basically got off the hook because it was a fake notebook and it would have been self-defense anyway. That being said, um, Nier's mellow personality is a lot more pronounced in this episode. You see it quite a bit, and, uh... What really surprised me is Sayu actually got kidnapped, and I thought it was gonna be, me uh, you know, near in his mellow personality, but it wasn't. Instead, it was that female member of the task force who is only in this version. That being said, uh... This episode was actually really good. I really enjoyed it as well. Uh, finally, Rem showed up again. I was surprised that Rem wasn't the one who killed them, uh, killed El. And uh, also, we Watery didn't die, which uh, really surprised me. Um, I still don't know if Light's dad's gonna die yet because I haven't watched episode 10 at the time I'm recording this, so we'll find out. Another thing, uh, El made a video uh, for to be played when he died at his funeral, and it basically just told everyone to accept Nier as his successor. And then he made another video for Nier to watch in private, telling him that Light is Kira, and to take him out. Now that being said, um... This episode had quite a few differences, obviously, as I've mentioned. And, uh, they already have determined that Mikami is, uh, the one who or not Mikami, but they determined that it is a public defender who was one of the killers, and Mikami is one of the suspects. Also, uh, Takata is a, or Takata, or Takata, whatever her name is, Kiyomi, uh, the, uh, person who is Light's, uh, secondary love interest, who was, uh, the other ex-Kira. She, uh, she's non-existent in this version, so she's not in it. Instead, uh, he, Misa has basically feared, filled her role in helping Mikami wipe people out. And, uh, in doing that, he has Misa keep a piece of the Death Note tied to her at all times, so she doesn't lose her memories with Mikami still owning the Death Note. But, that being said... Or, I guess... I don't know. I think I think Light still technically owns the Death Note, I mean, and Mikami's just holding it, and Misa has the, uh, paper tied to her arm. So all of them have the memories, and they're all using the one Death Note. Now, while Light says he's going to use this kidnapping plot as a plan to get the notebook back from his dad. I really was not expecting the kidnapping plot to be part of this, just because of all the uh, stuff they've already cut out. Um, that being said, that female police officer, I guess her backstory must have been fake, and she's probably using an alias. That being said, uh... She is the one who kidnapped Sayu, and I apologize for that fat fuck in the background. You can hear his voice, but, uh, he just keeps talking in the other room, and uh, I, I, you know, there's nothing I can really do about it at the moment. But, uh, that being said, uh, episode 9 was really good. I already saw the preview to episode 10. It shows Nier dressed up in a mellow getup, uh, so obviously I've, the mellow personality is going to become dominant. Another thing I found really inter interesting is that in Nier's mellow personality, he said he he was supposed to be the one to kill Air L, which I find really odd. Another thing I not really just for this, but for Death Note in general, if L's real name is L Lalite and there's like a period, does that mean L is literally his first name, or it's short for something and we'll never know his first name? That go uh, that being said, the Death Note creator's identity is a secret, so. Maybe that's the whole point, is we don't know L's first name. Or maybe his first name literally just is the letter L, and they just put a period in it uh, to make it look like an abbreviation in this version, or what. Since his name's never shown in the manga, only on the card that comes with the special edition of the 13th book, we'll never know. That being said, 
Uh, I'm about to watch episode 10 probably tomorrow, and then I'll do the review to that, and then 11, and we'll be done. So, stay tuned. Okay, so now time to talk about episode 10. Episode 10 had, uh, again, more differences, etc., etc., you know what, you know the drill, all the differences. Uh, but that being said, uh, one of the biggest differences in episode 10 was, uh, Himura, that chick that, uh, turned out to be, uh, that was, uh, first, the, the one who kidnapped, uh, Light's sister, who was only in this version, actually turned out to be Hal Lidner, the chick that used to work with Nier in the, uh, original. But now, uh, Light, uh, wrote it so that she would deliver the notebook to him, and, uh, give it to him so that he could, uh, one-up, uh, Mello, because, uh, it, uh, actually turned out she was working for Mello, because Nier completely became Mello now, so... I was kind of expecting that to happen, since Mello was originally the one who kidnapped, uh, Sayu and stole the Death Note, so... That being said... Um, Avi L also made a video to tell Light that, uh, Light's dad that he thought of him as a father, and that, uh, he should, uh, not end up dead like him. And also to imply that Light is Kira. Uh, that being said, Light's dad starts suspecting him, and, uh, when Light actually does the trade-off for the notebook with Himura, his dad actually sees it, and writes his own name in the Death Note. Uh, partially because, uh, Light makes up this bullshit story that it's not actually the real Death Note. So he says, you know, if this isn't the Death Note, I won't die, so he writes his own name, and it's a lot sadder, actually, I think, or at least... It, I don't know, it's hard to say, because his death was pretty sad in the anime, too, so I don't know. But his death, uh, was sadder, I think, in part because of this, because he died right in front of... Well, no, he died right in front of Light on the, uh... in the original as well, but he was killed by Mello, so... Uh, that being said, uh, the whole near mellow personality thing now, near is completely mellow, and, uh, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, I didn't hate the character of mellow, but I did hate the character of near in the original series. Um, just because he didn't really have his own personality, he was all L, basically, and, I don't know. Mello was a little bit more unique, so I thought he was a little bit of a better character, just a little bit. I didn't think he was that great of a character. But I didn't absolutely hate him like I did with Nier, so... This series has been really good so far. Um, Light has the Death Note back now, and, uh, they think, and, uh... Oh, part of the reason that Light's dad suspected Light was because, uh, you know, the whole, uh, Light uh, having Mikami call them as Kira, and, uh... In the original, he sent them pages from the Death Note and stuff like that, and also Ryuk. But that didn't happen in this version, so... Instead, he just, uh, told them where to find Nier's, uh, or Mello's base and the people who are with him, so... I don't know. Also, um, another interesting thing was Mikami was going to, uh, do an inquiry on Mello after arresting him, and that's how he was gonna get Mel uh, Nier and Mello's names instead of the same person in this version. Uh, that being said, uh, Mello escaped, and, uh, now, uh... I, I assume because they suspected Mikami of being, uh, the ex Kira, although they don't ever mention ex Kira or any of that, because, like I said, they're only, they only did 11 episodes for this series, and they're kind of wrapping a lot of things up, so, with what they're doing, I think they're doing a really good job so far, and, uh, even though I already kind of know the ending to episode 11, I'm hoping it doesn't disappoint me, um, I mean, it's, I, I, like I said, it's in tradition with the way I saw the original anime, I had the ending spoiled, so... After this, I've just got to talk about episode 11, and then I'll be done with this Death Note stuff. I don't know if I'm actually gonna do that video of my overall thoughts of the series. I feel that doing this episode-by-episode episode thing I've been doing is probably enough to give you an idea what I think of the series. It was a decent enough series so far, and, uh, stay tuned for my thoughts on episode 11 in 5. Four, three, two, one. So I guess now it's time to talk about episode 11, but that's really going to be hard to do because of what they showed after the credits. They showed the trailer for the new Death Note 2016 movie in uh, the, the Japanese one. And from what I saw, it looks like exactly what I want it to see. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to talk about that until after episode 11. Uh, after, after I talk about episode 11 here. So let's get that over with. Episode 11, as I mentioned a few times, I had the ending spoiled to me to a point. 
Um, a lot of major differences, obviously, as always, you know the drill here. Um, L made a final video to be shown at the end, which he said he was, he was sorry for doubting Light and things like that, implying he wanted him to survive. But then, of course, he ends the video with, there's a zero point, there's not even a 0.1% this video will ever be shown. So, it's hard to say what he was actually thinking there. But that being said, um, I really don't... Uh, I really liked the series. I really did. I really enjoyed it. And I liked all the differences. But just once, I'd like to see an interpretation where Light actually wins. That would be something I really enjoy. So, basically this episode, Mikami never betrays Light, which I like, or he never kills himself, or rather... You know, he never does the famous You're Not God speech. Instead, he starts a fire and says, Don't get in God's way, and uh, blocks everyone from getting to light. That same fire causes the uh, red notebook, which is Misa's notebook, to burn, and causes them to lose their memories. Now, on a s brief side note, if you notice, I'm playing the Doom beta here. It's unrelated to what I'm talking about. I just felt I should mention it real quick. Um, it's pretty cool, and it's fucking Doomy as shit. So, Doom. But back to Death Note. So, anyway, so, um, in this episode, obviously it ends with Light dies in the fire as well. Rem and Watery both survive, which they don't survive in the original series, obviously. And, uh, unfortunately, Nier still survives, and apparently Nier was faking being mellow the whole time. And, uh, Hal Lidner, or Himura, is, uh, was working for L, was appointed by L to help Nier with the whole kidnapping plot. So it was all L's plan. Which I actually like, because it means that Nier didn't have any original plans of his own in this series, so... I really like that it was all L, because I hate Nier. But, uh, anyway, episode 11 was a good way to end the series, just like the ending to all the others. It was, uh, you know, decent. Obviously, I think the anime ending is definitive, even more so than the manga ending. Just because the manga ending... I don't know, I, I like Ryuk's final words to light at the end a little bit better in the anime ending, just because he sounds more heartfelt. So now it's time to talk about what I really want to talk about, because at the end of the credits of episode 11, they show a trailer for Death Note 2016, the new movie, and uh, six notes are being dropped to the earth, exactly what I want to have, and I've, because ever since I saw that rule in my uh, Death Note that I have, because I have one of those Death Note replicas. Um, I really wanted to see six notes be dropped in the world at once. That happens. A true successor to Kira. A true successor to L. Lost the lead. And, uh, a bunch of other cool stuff I saw, like there's cyber terrorism apparently, and all sorts of crazy shit. I'm really excited now. Obviously this exists on the movie timeline, but even so, to have the fucking six death notes alone makes me so happy. And to have a true second Kira and all that. I'm honestly hoping that they also kind of tie in the relight ending with the Shinigami light theory, and uh, maybe some of that alt fan alternate ending too, but you know, that's probably just wishful thinking. That being said, uh... This has been Fugitive Red Eye, and I am so fucking stoked for that Death Note 2016 movie. And I really enjoyed this 2015 drama. Um, obviously I waited a year to watch it, but, uh, you know what? It was totally worth it, and if you're a true Death Note fan, I think you'd probably enjoy it. It has just enough different to keep you wondering what's gonna happen next, unless, of course, you've watched my videos, because I spoiled them all, so... I apologize for that. That being said, I can't wait till Death Note 2016. I guess that's the official title of it. And, uh, I also am wondering what they're gonna do for the American version, but fuck that. I wanna see Death Note 2016. And this has been Fugitive Red Eye, and tune in next time. Thank you. Pingus, 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 ping, 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 ping.